Good morning. This is Eugene May. I am the teacher of Eagles Wings Ministries located in Dover, Florida. And I invite you to stay tuned for these next few minutes as we revisit Psalm 91. Back in the early days of this video broadcast, I did a teaching on Psalm 91. And I believe that God wants me to go back and speak about it again. We're in some very perilous times right now. The scripture talks about perilous times. And in these perilous times, we find it difficult to live in many ways. Uh, some, uh, some people are throwing up their hands and <laughs> saying, Lord Jesus, get us out of here. Well, that would be wonderful if he did, but I'm not sure that uh, the timing and all of that's right for today. But anyway, over the last several weeks, I have talked about fear, talked about following God and trusting God in the midst of everything. I dealt with fear of warfare, uh, fear of lack of provision. I talked about fear of the future and fear of death. And as I began to pray about this week's teaching, the Spirit of the Lord said, let's go back. Let's go back to the basics. In Psalm 91, David David, the king of Israel. David, a man after God's own heart, begins to talk about us, all of us. And, uh, of course, I know it's a thousand years before Jesus came, 3,000 plus years ago, but yet it is applicable for today, for right now in your life and in mine. I want to read the psalm in its entirety. He begins like this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you and from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord even because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread on the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample, trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. 
As I read that, my heart was filled again with confidence in God. You see, I believe that God wants us to put our confidence in Him in every situation and in every circumstance. And as I began at the beginning of this particular video, I started talking about the world situation. We are in a real world with real problems. I wish it was not true. But one of the things that concerns my heart more than anything else is not Eugene May. It's not my wife, Sherry. It's not my children. It's the whole of the body of Christ. Yes, I am concerned for my own life and my own safety and safety of my family. I'm concerned about those things. But I'm concerned about you. You are a part of my heart. I love the body of Christ. Without the body of Christ, it seems like things are almost meaningless. But with you, and with the hand of God upon you, then everything is worth it. Why? Because you are the choice of God. You are the ones that God has chosen to be his children, to be his family. Yes, he wants you to live. He wants you to be protected. When I read Psalm 91, I see David the king. I see him in the situations that are real in life taking a stand of faith. I believe that's what God wants us to do, is to take a stand of faith. I'm not at all giving up. No, I am standing strong. Yes, for my family, yes, for me, but also for you. I'm putting my faith out there, believing that God is touching you in the midst of all the situations that could possibly happen in this world. And one day I would like to go back and watch this video and think about the things that are going on in this world and <laughs> have a good laugh because God did what God promised to do. You see, we have a God who has given many, many promises. As we look at Psalm 91, he starts out saying, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place. Th that speaks about the heart of God. That speaks about he who dwells in that place of intimacy with God. I've heard a lot of teaching on this. And there's a lot of teaching about the secret place, and, and all of it is good. But sometimes I think we want to complicate it. We want to make it some, someplace off somewhere. But we're in this real world, and that secret place is in his presence, in his heart. And God wants us to know that that's where we are. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You're in the heart of God. So he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of, all, of the Almighty. And then he goes on and he says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. And so I'm going to say, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Trust is an interesting thing. Trust is what we find ourselves walking in as we put our faith in him. Trust 
it's like I said one time on one of these videos, it's like me standing in the front of the porch and my boy jumping into my arms, knowing that I'm going to catch him. You see, that's the way our trust is with God. That no, we know that he's going to catch us. That he is going to be with us. He's going to protect us. The scripture goes on to say, Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Yeah, there are those who want to do harm. There are those that want to destroy. Right now in the world, there are those who are wanting to, to destroy the church of Jesus Christ. In some nations, and I am not here to preach against nations today, but in some nations, the church is a target. True believers are a target. And that is a situation of reality. I wish it was not so. But I cannot deny the truth. And so there are those who are persecuting the church. But the scripture says that he will deliver us. He will cover us with his feathers, verse 4 says. With his feathers. And under his wings we will take refuge. Now, this is a picture of God spreading out his wings. And, you know, we have these anthropomorphic descriptions of God where we give him a face and we give him hands and we give him feet. And now in this, we give him wings. That word anthropomorphic is a big word, but it talks about giving uh, characteristics, physical characteristics. To God who is not physical, who is a spirit. And so we do that. And it says that he covers us with his feathers, with his wings. And his truth shall be our shield and buckler. His truth. What is his truth? Do you know? I've got this Bible in front of me. I'm reading Psalm 91 from this Bible. It happens to be a new King James Version. But do you know what the Word of God itself says about itself? It says it's true. But do you know what Jesus said about this book? He said, your Word, speaking to the Father, your Word is truth. And so God wants us to know that He has given us His Word. And he has covered us with his word. He has covered us with his word. I love what the psalm says. It says that in the times of sickness and disease, it says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He goes on to say, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the error that flies by day. One of the things that the enemy of our souls, that's Satan, not people, but one of the things that he tries to do is bring fear upon us. As I mentioned at the beginning of this teaching today, over the last several weeks I've talked about fear. That's the instrument of Satan. He wants to bring fear. He wants to bring fear in the night or that we're going to be attacked even during the day. He wants to do that. But God's word says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us power. He's given us love. And he's given us the right to control our minds, to control our thinking. Now, he goes on to say, nor, talking about God not giving us these things, but protecting us from them, he says, nor, uh, we don't have to be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. 
Then he goes on and he talks about the immediate things that could be happening and that are happening in much of the world. He says, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Wow. That's talking about protection in the midst of everything going wrong all around us. I believe in walking in that protection. I believe that God wants us to hold on to him and say, God, it doesn't matter what's happening around me. I am not going to die. I am not going to be destroyed. Why? Because my trust is in you. He says a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Then he goes on to say this. He says, you're not going to be the one that's destroying folks around you. Why does he say that? How does he say that? He says, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you see, you're you're not going to be desiring what the wicked desires. You're not going to be looking for the things that they have. And because of that, you're not going to be rewarded as them. How is their reward? It's destruction. That's their reward. Then he goes on and he, he talks about us again. In fact, this whole psalm is about the people of God. He says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. Because you have gone into that secret place, into the presence of God. Because you have desired him to be your protector. He says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Wow. That's a promise. He says, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. God wants us to hold on to promises like this. And so he goes on and he says, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Wow. He brings his angels into this subject. He says, you know, the angels are there for you. When I look at the scripture, I find verses like this, that his angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for us who are the heirs of salvation. That's amazing to me. The angels of God are ministering spirits sent to do one particular thing, to minister for us who are the heirs of salvation. Wow. I look at that. Here I am. I'm getting old. I'm 78 years old. I'm not as young as I used to be. And I begin to look at those promises. And they still amaze me that he has said, and I've read this all of my life, he has said <laughs> that he is going to give his angels charge over me, over you. It, it just blesses me. And he says he's going to keep me in all my ways. Wow. God is so good. He's for us. He's not against us. And then he goes on and he says this. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. In their hands, they're going to come in the midst of the problem, the difficulty that we may be experiencing. And he says they're going to bear you up. I remember... 
reading in the New Testament when Jesus was being tempted of the, of the devil. One of the things that Satan did was to take him up to the precipice of the temple and says, cast yourself off and go to the ground below before you hit the ground at the bottom. The angels will come if God is who he said he is. And they will lift you up. They will protect you. And Jesus said, don't tempt the Lord your God. We don't live that way. That's not the way we live as Christians. We're not going to tempt things. But Satan was quoting this scripture. He was trying to use this scripture against Jesus himself. You know, sometimes the enemy does that. He wants to come and he wants to use scripture to try to bring confusion to you. And so he says to us that in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Then he says, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and serpent you will trample underfoot. This is amazing. Now he is not necessarily talking about us going out and deliberately stepping upon the cobra or the, the rattlesnake here in the United States or the coral snake or the copperhead or the water moccasin and other very poisonous snakes. And that's, that's not what he's talking about, but he's talking about in our daily life. As we go through life, things happen. And he says, but he's going to protect you. And God wants us to understand that his protection is a gift. It says, and I want to read this again. He says, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. You know, the Bible describes Satan as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. But God says he's going to protect us. And so I put my trust in that. I put my trust in the fact that God says that I am going to protect you. Now the last three verses of Psalm 91 are very interesting. It seems that the voice changes and it's like God speaking to his people here. Let's see what God has to say to us. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. He's talking about us. Because he, that's you, has set his love upon me, he says. That's God. Not Eugene May. Not even you. But he says, because you have set your love upon him, what is he going to do? He will deliver you. He says, I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. We can call upon God. We can call upon God in an emergency. We can call upon God in any situation or circumstance we may be facing. It says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And then he says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Wow. Those last two verses I want to read again. He says, he shall call upon me. How do we call upon him? We can do it in prayer. <laughs> we can do it by saying, help, in the midst of a circumstance. Sometimes we don't even have time to use his name. Sometimes we can just call on him by saying, his name, Jesus. I remember we almost had an accident years ago in our car. We were on the way to a town near us to preach that night. 
and uh, a truck pulled over in front of us going in the same direction but he pulled over in front of us and jammed on his brakes and we were going up under the truck and we just simply said Jesus and the next thing we knew that we were out of the road we were past the truck and we were back into the road with no injury no accident just the name Jesus he says he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him you know God honors his people we honor him but he honors us and then it says with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation my what a promise with long life I'm believing for long life I'm only 78 right now I've been around a few years but I want to say to you I just believe I'm going to be around a few more because with long life he's going to satisfy me and show me my salvation one day you'll hear that Eugene May is going to be with the Lord. It'll be true. It will be true. But you'll know this, that I went in victory, not in defeat. Why? No fear, only faith. Now, <clears throat> I want to share one last thing with you. About 50 years ago, I really began to fall in love with Psalm 91. Oh, I knew it. I read it many, many times. But I began to fall in love with this psalm. And I took this psalm and I personalized it. In fact, I personalized it and I framed it, put it on my wall. And this is how I personalized it. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the psalm before we finish this video. I begin at verse 1. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous Pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste, lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place, no evil shall befall me nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands I shall, uh, they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I will trample underfoot. And then where God begins to speak about his people in verse 14, I like to say it this way. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I will call upon him, and he will answer me. 
He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. You see, I like to take the word and I like to personalize it to myself as if God is speaking to me. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. And I want to encourage you to take it, write it out, make it personal, put you in there and you can put your name even if you want to. Talk about what God has done for you. Now, I want to pray for you. I believe that God is wanting to put his covering all around you. And that is his love and the blood of Jesus. Father, I come to you thanking you for this opportunity just to share this word that's been on my heart this week. I thank you, Lord, that you are causing people to realize that you are a God who is for us, not against us. And in this real world that we're living in, and yes, sometimes we look at it and we wonder what's going to happen. But, but in this real world, we can have assurance. We can have trust in you. And I thank you right now, God, that you are doing all things well in every one of our lives. And we receive it done in Jesus' name. I'm going to say God bless you. You have a great week. If you want to contribute to the success of this ministry, you can go to PayPal at eugenemay.org. EugeneMay, eugenemay.org. And you can contribute. God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed day. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.